Namaste Sarasati Devi Khoravani Precharine Nirvasesha Shanyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine Panchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar, Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. So welcome everyone to our Bhakti Shastri course. We're studying Bhagavad Gita. This evening we're on chapter 13. Yesterday we covered up to text number 12. We had first of all Arjuna's question on six topics. Arjuna wanted to know about first of all the Shitra the field of activities and then he wanted to know about Shetragna, the knower of the field. He wanted to know about Prakriti and Purush and he wanted to know knowledge and the object of knowledge. Actually he would asked first of all about Prakriti and Purush but Arjuna, uh, Krishna kept that till later. We'll, meet, we'll see this evening Krishna answers that. He began by explaining about, first of all, Shitra and Shitragna. Shitragna, the Shitra means the, the, the body, the field of activities, and the Shitragna, the knower of the field. So we'll, we will ask the devotees, kindly tell me, what are the elements in the Shitra? How many elements, first of all, are there in the Shitra? Can we have some hands up? There's yeah, get this hand up. Okay. Yes. <laughs> All right, tell me, what are the ten senses? Ten senses, uh, eyes, nose, ear, uh, tongue, skin, uh, five, uh, five, uh, and then five working senses uh, uh, are the hands, legs, and uh, genitals, uh, gen uh, anus, and genital organs. Excretory organs and, uh, and uh, uh, voice, voice. Voice, right. Okay, thank you. So this is the field of activities and you also described the interactions, seven interactions of the field yes. of activities were listed. Yes. So there were interactions of the field. So that is the field of activities. And then we went on to speak about 20 items of the process of knowledge, right? So we will ask devotees to give us one, just tell us about one process of the process. What, first of all, which one was the most important of the 20 items of the process of knowledge? Which one is the most important? Not you, no. Okay, okay. Let other people answer. Maharani Mataji. 
Hare Krishna Maharaj appears in Satna Humble Obeisances. Um, Amani Uttam, humility was the most important, was the number one. Which one? Hmm? Humility. Humility. No, that's not right. Humility, no, that's not right. That Sorry. wasn't the one. That's not what Prabhupada said is most important. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Um, Prabhupada said that engaging in devotional service was the most important. Yes, he says, constant and unalloyed devotional service. Constant and unalloyed devotional service was the most important item. And he said, with, without constant and unalloyed devotional service, the other 19 items are of no use. They're not very helpful. You may be humble. You may be... Uh, non-violent. You may have to do so many things, but if you don't have constant and unalloyed devotional service, then the process of knowledge is not executed. Right? So, the most important one was constant and unalloyed devotional service. Right? Now, certainly, uh, pridelessness, humility, that, that's the first ones mentioned, mentioned first by Krishna, but it doesn't mean it's the most important. Certainly it's important. It should be there. In cultivating the process of knowledge, that humility is required. All right, we will ask devotees to give some other items from the process of knowledge. Give me one item. Accepting a spiritual master. All right, accepting a spiritual master means you also follow the instructions. Accept the spiritual master is not just in name only, not just only put the picture there, but actually faithfully submit and take instruction and follow the instruction. Right? Okay, thank you. Then someone else? Uh, I Krishna from Yes, Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisance. Uh, one of the qualities is non violence. Yes, can you explain to us what non violence means? Yes, Maharaj. Uh, every, every living entity is suffering in this material world. So, unless we help him, as we know this process of devotional service, unless we help him to get out of this bondage of material nature and engage in bhakti, so we are committing violence to others. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, anybody, some more people have their hands up? Yes, Maharaj. There's Ganga Prashant. Absence of false ego. Absence of false ego. All right. Absence of false ego. How can we? Would you like to enlighten us more about this? What What is the sign of false ego? Lack of what does it mean to have false ego? How can we identify someone has got false ego or someone doesn't have false ego? To have sense of proprietorship and also not submitting as devoted to Krishna. Oh, what did you say? To have, to have no sense of proprietorship? Not Claim, claim of proprietorship is false ego, and also not surrendering to Krishna is false ego. Oh, really? Okay, we'll hear from somebody else. Uh, 
Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Uh, another uh, quality is uh, simplicity, Maharaj. Um, simplicity means that uh, we should not have diplomacy and we should be always straightforward in our dealing. Even have to, I mean, even in the uh, extent like we can disclose the real truth even to the enemy. Very good. Thank you. Very nice. Yes. All right. Someone else is there? Archana Bhakti Rasa. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Pranam Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, cleanliness is one of the uh, uh, qualities, and uh, cleanliness is that of the internal as well as the, uh, cleanliness can be internal and external. And the external cleanliness uh, deals with like taking bath and you know keeping the ambience clean and things like that. And the internal cleanliness, your uh, Prabhupada says, by chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, uh, one gets uh, clean of their past uh, karma. Okay, very good. Thank you. We should be tolerant. A devotee is expected uh, to be trained to be tolerant uh, of. Tolerate on uh, chastisement, insults from other. So Maharaj gave example of one disciple of Sri Prabhupada that uh, her husband is a non-devotee, and she should accept that as a karma uh, to accept uh, the condition of her husband as a non-devotee and try to be tolerant with that. Okay. Thank you. Yes, some more? Jidam Vrittu Jaravyadi Dok Dosh Dukhanu Darshanam Accepting the distress of birth, death, old age and disease. Accepting the distress. Accepting the distress. Yes, because they are problems their problems uh, uh, to accept them to recognize the problem yeah. uh, I don't know if, if you accept <laughs> it means you, you, you don't do anything about it if you accept it we have to recognizing <laughs> the problem we want to be aware certainly we want to be aware of the problems the misery of birth old age disease and death so that we can make advancement in future Right. All right. Okay. I see one hand is still up, is it? Yeah, uh, it's... Uh, oh, it's Gita Indu Lake. All right. So we're finished. All right. So we'll go ahead now. We're going on to the next section. Right? We've, we've heard about... We've heard about the... the uh, the process of knowledge. Now we're going to go on to text number 13 and we'll hear about, it's the beginning of another section in this 13th chapter and we're going to hear about the object of knowledge. Gyam, right? The, what is the object of knowledge? Who knows? The object of knowledge is Well, not exactly Krishna, but <laughs> some, it's the object of knowledge is to, to uh, the, the soul and the super soul, right? There are two, no, the two knowers in the body. So the object of knowledge is to know the soul and the super soul. So we're going to hear about the soul and the super soul. If we read text number 13, someone please read text number 13, translation. Yes, Prabhuji. Yes, I will. I will read. Yes, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. The Lord has explained. No. Uh, should I read the translation? Text number 13. Yes, yes. The translation. Yes. yes. Uh, I also know, I shall now explain the knowable, knowing which you will taste the eternal. 
Brahman, the spirit, beginningless and subordinate to me, lies beyond the cause and effect of this material world. Geyam yattat pravakshami yat yadvad Okay, all right, all right, thank you. Geyam, the noble, right? This, so, Lord Krishna is going to explain the noble in this section. So, we're going to hear about both the soul and the super soul. So, this verse is describing about the soul, right? Krishna says, if, when we read the verse, he said, that which uh, I shall now uh, explain the, the noble, knowing which you will taste the eternal Brahman, the spirit beginningless and subordinate to me. So what is subordinate to Krishna? That is the this, this soul, the living entity is subordinate to the Lord. So both are in the heart, but they're on different positions. The individual living entity is subordinate to the Lord, but he's beyond the cause and effect of the material world, right? So Krishna is describing here Brahman. We were talking about Brahman yesterday. Remember the five different levels of Brahman? Who can tell me? Five different states of Brahman. It's Anamaya, Pranamaya, um, and there's one more. There's Vigyanamaya, Anandamaya, but I missed one. Yeah, you missed uh, Manamaya or Jnanamaya. Ah, uh, yes, I missed that. Right? So, Anamaya, the grains, then Prana, the life symptoms, then Jnana or Manamaya, the mind and the, the knowledge. And then Vigyana and Anandamaya. Anandamaya is Krishna and Vigyanamaya is being described here. This is Vigyanamaya. When we read the purport, if you look in the purport, Prabhupada mentions here at the end of the purport, he said, It is to be understood, oh, I should read the whole sentence. Therefore, the description of Brahman mentioned in this verse is in relation to the individual soul. And when the word Brahman is applied to the living entity, it is to be understood that he is Vigyana Brahma, as opposed to Ananda Brahma. Ananda Brahma is the supreme Brahman. Personal, person is the Supreme Brahman Personality of Godhead. So Ananda Brahma is the Personality of Godhead and the living entity Vigyana Brahma. So the, the spirit soul is Vigyana Maya. So this is Lord Krishna's description about the living entity. If we read Prabhupada's purport here, text number 13, from the beginning, the Lord has explained the field of activities and the nor of the field, right? That was in the first section, text number maybe two up to about seven, described the field of activities and the nor of the field. And then he has also explained the process of knowledge, the nor of the field of activities, it, text 8 to 12. Now he begins to explain the noble, first the soul and then the super soul. By knowledge of the knower, both the soul and the super soul, one can relish the nectar of life. How did we define, how did Lord Krishna define knowledge? What is knowledge? Knowledge is to know what? Some hands? Soul 
Some, somebody signed this up? Yes, Maharaj. I need Krishna. You have to know more than that. Not only the soul and the super soul, you have to know one more thing. You have to know the field of activities. You have to know also about the field, right? Okay. Um. Prabhupada, let's read the purport, the second paragraph. The Supreme Lord, as a super soul, is also stated in the Vedic literature, Svetashvatara Upanishad, to be Pradhana Shitragna. Patir Ganesha, the chief knower of the body and the master of the three modes of material nature. In the Smriti it is said, Dasa Bhuto Harereva Nanyasyasyaiva Kadachana. The living entities are eternally in the service of the Supreme Lord. This is also confirmed. Lord Chaitanya in his teachings, therefore the description of Brahman mentioned in this verse is in relation to the individual soul. Okay. We'll go on to text number 14. We're going to hear about the super soul now. Someone can read the translation. What is your impression hearing this statement from Lord Krishna? How do we understand the super soul? Yes, he has a form, right? He has arms and legs, and he has a face, and he has ears. So he can hear, he can see, he can walk. He's a person, he's a, and at the same time, he's all pervading. He's pervading everything. So this is the inconceivable potency of the Lord. The individual soul, however, is not all-pervading. Right? There's a big difference between the individual soul and the super soul. So Prabhupada, in the purport, he talks about when we offer something to the Lord. And he quotes a verse from the Bhagavad Gita, offering a flower, a fruit, a little water. So he said, Krishna accepts it. How does he accept it? The Lord is in a far distant place. How can He accept things? This is the omnipotence of the Lord. Even though He is situated in His own abode, far, far away, He can extend His hands to accept what anyone offers. That is His potency. Hmm. Okay. So we think, and then Prabhupada quotes, huh? Krishna's in Goloka, Goloka, Goloka Eva Nivasatya Kiladmabuto. Although he's always engaged in pastimes in his transcendental planet, but still he can come and accept our offerings. 
Therefore, this verse describes the Supreme Soul, the Personality of Godhead, not the individual soul. Going ahead, text number 15. Someone read. The super soul is the original source of all senses, yet he is without senses. He is unattached, although he is the maintainer of all living beings. He transcends the modes of nature, and at the same time, he is the master of all the modes of material nature. So how can we explain this? That the Lord, he's described here, the source of all the senses, yet he is without senses. He's unattached, but he's maintaining everything. How can, we, how can you explain these contradictions? You haven't studied Ishopanishad yet, but you must have read it. In the Ishopanishad, there's also these contradictions. Hare Krishna, Adi Maharaj. Yes? This is my humble obeisance to all the glories of Shri Prabhupada. Uh, it means that he had no uh, material senses, yet uh, spiritual, transcendental senses. Okay. That's one way. That he, has, his, he has a form, but he hasn't got a material form. He has senses, but not material senses. Yes. We also explain when there are these kind of contradictions that it indicates the inconceivable potency of the Lord. That this is, this is the inconceivable potency of the Lord. The Lord has these things which are beyond the power of our mind and senses to understand. So we simply have to accept that the Lord has inconceivable potencies. That he can be in one place and at the same time he's everywhere. So Prabhupada writes like this in the purport. Uh, so, in t put text number 15, purport, the Supreme Personality of Godhead has no hands which are materially contaminated, but he has his hands and accepts whatever sacrifice is offered to him. That is the distinction between the conditioned soul and the super soul. He has no material eyes, but he has eyes, otherwise how could he see? He sees everything, past, present and future. He lives within the heart of the living being and he knows what has been done, what we are doing now and what is awaiting us in the future. So this is Krishna's inconceivable potency. Prabhupada describes his different qualities. Those who are devotees can understand. But if someone's not a devotee, then it's very difficult for them to understand these kind of features. So first qualification to understand Krishna is to be the devotee. You must have devotion. Then only you can understand. All right? Prabhupada says, Bhagavad Gita also confirms that when the Lord appears, He appears as He is by His internal potency. He is not contaminated by the material energy because He is the Lord of the material energy. So as the Prabhu pointed out, the Lord has spiritual senses. He's, his form has is made up of the internal potency, the internal potency, the spiritual feature, the spiritual potency of the Lord. The external potency is the material potency, but the Lord's form is spiritual, pure, not contaminated. 
So the impersonalists, they also cannot understand these kind of th statements. They are not able to understand. There's, Prabhupada said at the end of the purport, therefore the impersonalists who are still materially affected cannot understand the personality of Godhead. Because they think that, that when the Lord comes that he's come from the Brahman. So they think he has a material form. They cannot understand that there can be spiritual forms. That's the problem the impersonalists face. We'll go ahead, text number 16. We need a, someone to read. Yes, someone can read, please. The Supreme Truth exists outside and inside of all living beings, the moving and non-moving, because He is subtle, He is beyond the power of the material senses to see or to know. Although far, far away, He is also near to all. So these words are very similar, almost the same as what's there in the Ishopanishad. The similar statements are there. So these statements are offered to us to help us to understand that the Lord doesn't have a material form, that He's fully transcendental beyond the material mind and senses. Prabhupada writes in the purport, Therefore, in the Vedic language, it is said that to understand Him, our material mind and senses cannot act. But one who has purified his mind and senses by practicing Krishna consciousness and devotional service can see Him constantly. Right? It is confirmed in Brahma Samhita, the devotee who has developed love for the Supreme God can see Him always, without cessation. Right? Gita Induleka, what's that verse in Brahma Samhita? <laughs> Jai, thank you very much. <laughs> okay, we'll go ahead. Text number 17. Read the translation. Although the super soul appears to be divided among all beings, he is never divided. He is situated as one. Although he is the maintainer, maintainer of every living entity, it is to be understood that he devours and develops all. He devours and develops all. Wow, that's an interesting <laughs> statement about... The Lord, he devours, devouring and developing everything. So the Lord is in everyone's heart as a super soul. But at the same time, he's one. This is bewildering. An example was given to help us understand. These examples, these analogies are very important, right? So. The example is, the sun at the meridian is in its place. But if one goes for 5,000 miles in all directions and asks, where is the sun? Then what will people say? They will say, the sun is shining on the head. So this is the nature of the sun, that although in one place, he appears to be divided. So the Lord is like that, that he, he appears to be divided. Although He is one and undivided, it appears that He is divided. Just like the Super Soul. How many Super Souls do we have tonight taking part in this class? Anybody like to answer? One, right. One super soul. Yes. The super soul cannot be divided. So one super soul is here. The same super soul is in the heart of everyone. 
It's not that there are many super souls. There's only one super soul, but that one super soul expands in the heart of every living entity. Just like Lord Krishna had so many wives. There's one Krishna, but he has 16,000 wives and he's with each one and he had a palace for each one. So Prabhupada explains this devouring, reading the purport, Prabhupada said, The Supreme Lord, although the maintainer of every living entity, devours everything at the time of annihilation. This was confirmed in the 11th chapter, when the Lord said that he had come to devour all the warriors assembled at Kurukshetra. He also mentioned that in the form of time he devours also. He is the annihilator, the killer of all. When there is creation, he develops all from their original state. And at the time of annihilation, he devours them. Hmm. So this is the transcendental nature of the Supreme Lord. He's acting in all of these different ways. All right, go ahead, text number 18. Someone can read. He is the source of light in all luminous objects. He is beyond the darkness of matter and is unmanifested. He is knowledge, he is the object of knowledge, and he is the goal of knowledge. He is situated in everyone's heart. Hmm. Okay, so beautiful descriptions given about the nature of the super soul, the Lord in the heart, beyond the darkness of matter and is unmanifested. So that's why it's difficult for us to actually see him. So Prabhupada comments about how in the spiritual world there's no need of electricity, there's no need of the sun, everything is effulgent, everything has its own effulgence. So there's no need of the sun or the moon or electricity. And the Lord, he is, He's not situated in the, this material world, He's in the spiritual world, far away, and He's in His own abode, in the spiritual sky. So He's above this material manifestation. So then discussion about knowledge and about the Lord's form. Reading the purport, the last paragraph of the purport, he is situated in everyone's heart as the supreme controller. The supreme has legs and hands distributed everywhere, it cannot be said of the individual soul. Therefore. That there are two knowers of the field of activity, the individual soul and the super soul, must be admitted. One's hands and legs are distributed locally, but Krishna's hands and legs are distributed everywhere. Hmm. The Supreme Personality of Godhead Super Soul is the Prabhu or master of all living entities. Therefore, he is the ultimate shelter of all living entities. So there is no denying the fact that the Supreme Super Soul and the individual soul are always different. So in this way, you can see how Krishna is establishing that there are two souls, two knowers in the body, and one is the subordinate living entity and the other is the, super, the Supreme Soul, the Super Soul. 
So then next text, text 19, summarizing this. Please read the translation. the field of activities the body knowledge and the knowledge of, and the no, and the knowable have been summarily described by me only my devotees can understand this thoroughly and thus attend to my nature all right thank you so Prabhupada in the purport he summarizes what we've been covering so far the body knowledge and the knowable. This knowledge is of three things, the knower, the knowable, and the process of knowing. Combined, these are called vigyan, or the science of knowledge. Perfect knowledge can be understood by the unalloyed devotees of the Lord directly. Others are unable to understand. The monis, monis meaning these impersonalists or the Advaitavadis, they say at the ultimate stage that these three items become one, but the devotees do not accept this. Knowledge and the development of knowledge means understanding oneself in Krishna consciousness. We are being led by material consciousness, but as soon as we transfer all consciousness to Krishna's activities, realize that Krishna is everything, then we attain real knowledge. In other words, knowledge is nothing but the preliminary stage of understanding devotional service perfectly. In the 15th chapter, this will be very clearly explained. Right? And then Prabhupada, in that second paragraph, Prabhupada summarizes the main points from what we've studied. That we've studied the field, the knower of the field, and the, the field of activities, and then the process of knowledge. And now we've studied also Gyam, the object of knowledge. So this is all being described, the object of knowledge, meaning the soul and the super soul. All right, we'll go ahead. Next section, beginning. To, are there any questions so far? Anybody has any questions? No questions. Yes. Uh, apakah roh yang utama setelah dia uh, sandiwa uh, mengalami pembebasan sampai ke dunia rohani kemanakah sang uh, roh utama itu so after the uh, individual soul achieve the uh, liberation in the spiritual world Maharaj, so where do the uh, the paramatma go after accompanying the individual soul, and then the individual soul went to uh, Goloka Vrindavan. So after that, where, where do the uh, super soul go? Well, there's only one super soul, right? We just said there's only one super soul. It's not that there are many super souls. There's only one super soul, but that one super soul has expanded into the hearts of every living entity. So that one super soul, if, if one soul goes back to Godhead, it's not a problem for the soul. That, that super soul was still there, we're still going to be there in the material world. The super soul is there. It doesn't leave the material world. but. If one soul goes back to Godhead, it's not a problem for the super soul 
to just not to expand anymore into that heart because that heart that he's going back to Godhead. So the super soul will simply have it will still the you know super soul is here in the material world, it's not in the spiritual world. It's here. It's going to stay here. So that super soul will remain. It will just simply one super soul one super one it's just one form less that he, he will become, he will enter with the other super souls, with the other super, there's, of course, I'm saying other super souls, there's only one super soul, but he's expanded, so he, ha he doesn't need to expand so much, he can expand one less, if one soul is going back to Godhead, then he will expand one less, because it's not required. When it's not required, then there's so many other souls who do require. There's a constant flux of souls coming and going. There's so many souls falling from different planets, different universes, some are going up, some are coming down. So there's always need for the super soul, there's always engagement. Krishna is very busy. And we said, well, we're going to discuss just now about Prakriti, Yes. In the chat from Asim Krishna Prabhu, Maharaj, how can we understand that Krishna is knowledge itself? We have to take Krishna's word for it. Krishna is giving us knowledge from the speaking of the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna is giving us knowledge from the from his expansion as the super soul he's giving us knowledge right krishna said i'm in the heart of all living entities from me comes knowledge remembrance and forgetfulness he gives us knowledge he reminds us what we're supposed to do what we're not supposed to do he reminds us about our desire from the previous life we forget but the super soul carries that desire, reminds us what we wanted to do, the desires we bring from the previous life. He's giving us that knowledge. So it's coming from Krishna. So Krishna has this knowledge. So when we say Krishna is knowledge, yeah, He's giving, us, he, he's giving us this knowledge, He's sharing it with us, He's helping, He's telling us. So we understand it like that. Yes, Okay, we'll go ahead. The next section, text number twenty. Yes. Okay. So why, why in this verse, Krishna always using the word "ima," indicating that it's different from himself, like the super soul is different from Krishna. Why Krishna using the word "ima"? Well, you have to look at the Sanskrit. It's not fair, you know, to take a word like "he." and say why he's using it, because, you know, I don't know what the word is used in the, how it's used in the Sanskrit. It doesn't actually mention he. It simply said, Jyoti Sam Apitaj Jyotis. There's no he. I mean in the English word. 
Yes. Yeah, 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 okay. Is, so, we put, you know, the he is put there to make a sentence, to make good grammar, to make it literate so that we can understand. But it's not that in the Sanskrit language that Krishna is saying, I am this and that. But the, the, the editor, it's an editing thing, you see? They have to write it, they have to present the translation in such a manner that people can read it and understand. Yes? All right, we'll go ahead. Text number 20 is dealing with the Prakriti and the Purush. All right, the, the more difficult question. Prakriti, material nature, Purusha. Purusha meaning the enjoyer. And here you can see the word meaning Purusha is the living entities. Now actually, we're not Purusha. But we're trying to be Purusha. The real Purusha is Krishna, but we are trying to be the Purusha. We're trying to be the enjoyer. So we want to understand this relationship, this connection between the Prakriti and the Purush, the interaction. Could someone read the translation? and the living entities should be understood to be beginningless. Their transformation and the modes of matter are product of material natures. So the material nature, is the material nature eternal? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, it is, right? Material nature, is it, can you explain to me how it's eternal? material nature is the energy of the Lord and hence it is uh, the energy and the energetic are the one and the same. So the Lord is eternal, so it is eternal. All right, so what happens, right, you know, you, somebody builds a house, is that, that house is not going to be eternal, right? What's going to happen? Yes. It is made, it is made from the elements, so uh, when it is constructed also, it is made of five elements, then it gets dis disintegrated, then also it goes off into their respective, uh, it, it is not destroyed, the form is destroyed. The form is destroyed. And what happens to the elements? It goes to its respect, the air goes to its respective pocket, I mean the earth goes to the earth. They, they, it disintegrates into those basic elements. But what about when the earth is annihilated, the time of destruction? It is there in the, the Lord's body itself. It is unmanifested and uh, when it is manifested, it again comes into being. Right. The, the, everything at the time of devastation or the time of annihilation, everything enters into the body of Mahavishnu, right? Uh -huh. Yes. So. It, this whole manifestation is, Prabhupada explains, he said, just like clouds, just like clouds form in the sky, the cloud is sometimes there, and you know, some days it's cloudy, some days it's not. Where did the cloud go? <laughs> you know, everything's still there, it's just not. The cloud is not there, it's just not, but it, everything is still there, nothing is destroyed. So in the same way in material nature, sometimes it's manifest and sometimes it's not. Right? We have the, 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 the day of Brahma and we have the night of Brahma. So during the night there's, you know, a cosmic annihilation. 
And then the day comes, and another day, and then there's creation again. Everything goes on. And then with night, then again, devastation. So the material nature is still there, but it just simply undergoes some transformation. Sometimes it's manifest, sometimes it's not. Okay, and then... Oh, if we're reading the purple text number 20, we can understand something. What's the difference? You know the difference between the soul and the super soul? How can we understand this? We said one is the over one is the controller, one is the master, and the other is subordinate. Are they on the same platform? The soul and the super soul? Srila Prabhupada explains, if we read the first paragraph, the second, the, the, the second half of the first paragraph of the purport of text number 20, of course it is to be understood both the soul and the individual entity are different manifestations of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The living entity is in the category of his energy and the super soul is in the category of his personal expansion. Right? Mataji was just saying that Prakriti, material nature, is also the energy of the Lord. So how do we, how do we compare? Here we're, we're hearing that the the individual soul is also the energy of the Lord. Is there a difference between the two? What is the difference? Yes? Yes, Hare Krishna. So, uh, the Jiva is uh, invested with more potency by Lord, or by free will. The jiva is what? Uh, invested by free will, like higher potential, superior potency. Free will? What is the free will of the jiva? Compared to practice. We'll discuss that a bit more in a minute. There's another point. What does Krishna say in the Bhagavad Gita? Where is it in the Bhagavad Gita Krishna talks about this, about his Prakriti? You've yes. said? Yes? All right. Yes? It is superior, inferior energy about Paranapra. Right. What's the difference? Why is one superior? Because he's exploiting, because the living entity can exploit the resources of inferior nature, of Prakriti. Yes. What? What's another difference? Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Yes. Sorry. Um, the the living entity is conscious, and the material energy is not conscious. Right. That's the answer I was looking for. Conscious makes a difference. Consciousness. The living entity is the superior prakriti because he has consciousness and because he has con but his consciousness is polluted therefore as Gita Induleka Mataji said he's trying to exploit the resources of the material nature and we will we, we'll learn from Bhagavad Gita because he's trying to exploit the resources he's constantly struggling with material nature so this is the result. Anyway, the, he's superior, Prakriti, because he's conscious. We have consciousness. The dull matter doesn't have consciousness. That's the distinction.
Okay? Both material nature and the living entity are eternal. That is to say, they existed before the creation. So just as we existed before the creation, the material nature also did too. So the material nature is eternal. It's the Lord's energy. It's meant for the Lord's service. Prabhupada says, uh, that is the mystery of this material creation. The mystery of this material creation. What is the mystery? Gita Induleka? Do you know? Yes, let's read what Prabhupada has to say here. He said, The living entities are also in him, and because they are conditioned, they are averse to serving the Supreme Lord. Thus, they are not allowed to enter into the spiritual sky. But with the oncoming forth, with the coming forth of material nature, these living entities are again given a chance to act in the material world and prepare themselves to enter into the spiritual world. That is the mystery of this material creation. Actually, a living entity is originally spiritual part and parcel of the Lord, but due to his rebellious nature, he is conditioned within material nature. So this is our unfortunate situation. We are conditioned in the material nature. We have to overcome this conditioning. And we have to, in order to overcome this conditioning, we have to surrender. Okay, so the material nature and the prakriti are both understood to be beginningless, they're both eternal. Their transformation and the modes of matter are products of material nature. So the transformation of the prakriti, the transformation of the living entity, all of us, we're also, our bodies are changing, we're going through so many different changes. This is all due to the material nature. And the material nature is controlled through the three different modes. So this is the, the plight which we are in. But Prabhupada said, living entities are all the same. As far as spirit is concerned, living entities are all the same. But materially, we're all different. No two people are exactly alike. We see the twins, we have the twins in Mayapur, Pankajangari and Janani Vas. They look alike, but they're not, there's a difference, there's differences. Certainly there's differences. We see identical twins, but there are differences. The fingerprints are different. So many things are different. The DNA are different. So, but, the spirits, the, the living entities, the spirit souls, they're the same. One in quality. Going ahead, text 21. Someone read? Yes, Maharaj. Nature is 
said to be the cause of all material causes and effects, whereas the living entity is the cause of the various sufferings and enjoyments in this world. So we're very, it's very common for us, we wonder, why did Krishna do this to me? Why this world is giving me so many troubles? Why am I having so many problems? But it's very clear here who is responsible for our suffering and for our enjoyment, right? We said the body is the field of activity. According to how we use our bodies, how we act, we get different results. Our happiness and distress are due to the body. It's, it's, it's nobody else's fault. It was up to us how we, how we acted, what we did to deserve the punishments and the rewards. It's our choice. In the purport, Prabhupada talks about how every one of us, every one of us have different kinds of residential quarters. Residential quarters, you know, where are you living? You know, are you in your condominium? Or are you in the five-star hotel? Or are you in the dog kennel? Or are you just sleeping on the beach? You know, <laughs> different, different things. We all have different situations. The dog body, the pig's body. Prabhupada explains here, he says, suppose that a living entity is put into the body of a dog. As soon as he is put into the body of a dog, he must act like a dog. He cannot act otherwise. I was, I was watching one man, he had a little dog and he was, putting a, he was putting that collar around the neck of the dog and he was going to pull the dog on a leash and the dog was objecting. The dog could, he didn't want that collar. <laughs> But he's in the dog body. The man just put the collar around him anyway. The dog couldn't do anything about it. The dog really didn't like it, but <laughs> he had no choice. In the same way Prabhupada talks about the, the hog. As soon as the living entity is put into the body of a hog, he's forced to eat stool and act like a hog. And sometimes you're in the body of a demigod and you act according to that body. So this is the law of nature. We get different residential quarters, different situations according to our karma, according to our past actions and activities we're suffering or enjoying. We are responsible. It's our doing. The nature is the cause of the material causes, but the living entity is the cause of the suffering and enjoyment in this world. All right, going ahead, text 22, a memorization verse. All right, we'll all chant the Sanskrit, chant together. Purusha prakriti stohi, bhunte prakriti jankunai, karanam guna sangasya, sadasat yoni janmasu. Translation The living entity. Read someone. Material nature follows the way of life and join the three modes of nature. This is due to his association with that material nature. Thus, he meets with good and evil among various species. <laughs> right. Thus, we meet with good and evil among various species. Very interesting. So, we're the living entity and we're enjoying the three modes of nature. Somebody's enjoying the mode of ignorance. Somebody's enjoying the mode of passion or the mode of goodness. And they're very happy. 
Just like we said, the living entity becomes the hog or the dog. They may be very happy in their body. We, we may think very terrible, very disgusting. Just like sometimes you see people, they have, you know, they eat things and, you know, they, they're eating the most horrible things. But they're thinking very delicious. They're thinking very nice. You know, we're thinking, oh my goodness, it's terrible, it's horrible, it smells so bad. Oh, it's just disgusting. And, but they're thinking, oh, delicious. So there's so many things like that. So this is all due to the modes of nature. The living entities enjoying. Somebody's enjoying goodness, somebody passion, somebody ignorance. According to how we associate. According to how we associate with the modes of nature, we get suffering or happiness good and evil. The choice is ours. How do we want to use this body? Mm -hmm. So Prabhupada explains in the purport of text 22, important towards the end, uh, Prabhupada says, uh, Unless one is situated in Krishna consciousness, his material consciousness will oblige him to transfer from one body to another because he has material desires since time immemorial. But he has to change that conception. That change can be affected only by hearing from authoritative sources. The best example is here. Arjuna is hearing the science of God from Krishna. The living entity, if he submits to this hearing process, will lose his long-cherished desire to dominate material nature. And gradually and proportionately, as he reduces his long desire to dominate, he comes to enjoy spiritual happiness. In a Vedic mantra, it is said that as he becomes learned in association with the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he proportionately relishes his eternal blissful life. Very beautiful paragraph there by Srila Prabhupada, beautiful description of how we can all be saved from this entanglement in the modes of material nature. And the, and the, the main point is, the principle is to, that we should submit to the hearing process. Hearing, very important for all of us. Often Sometimes, you know, we, we don't hear, we don't retain what we hear. It goes in the one ear, goes out the other. Quickly we lose it. So hearing has to be done very carefully. All right, we'll go ahead. Text number 23. Someone read translation. Yet in this body there is another, a transcendental enjoyer, who is the Lord, the Supreme Proprietor, who exists as the overseer and permitter, and who is known as the Super Soul. All right, this is a, an important verse. I think this is quite quite an important verse. Uh, Lord Krishna is describing here the Upadrasta and the Anumanta. Right? Upadrista, Anumanta, Upadrista, Overseer, Anumanta, Permitter, Bharta, meaning? Bharta, meaning? Master. The Master. Bhokta, the Enjoyer. 
Right? So this is the position of the, the, the Purusha. Not our position, this is the position of the Lord, the Super Soul. He is the, the Maha Ishwara, right? He's the Supreme Lord. He's over everyone. We're tiny Purusha, but there's the Maha Ishwara. We're tiny Ishwaras. Prabhupada explained, he said, everywhere you go, there's somebody in charge. There's somebody responsible. You can't, you know, wherever, when you go out on Sankirtan, you go somewhere and they'll say, yes, what do you want? Why do you come here? What do you want here? Why are you coming here? Like that. And so, we're not so free. Sometimes people think, oh, we have independence. But what is our independence? What is the independence of the living entity? And we also can say, you know, if we are so free, if we have independence, we can choose what we want to do. And sometimes it's asked, you know, if Krishna is in the heart of every living entity, just like here, we're saying Krishna is the, the overseer, the permitter, then why does it happen that the living entity does something bad? That he'll do some crime, he'll do something very terrible. Who allows it? Does Krishna allow it? Why doesn't he stop it? How do we explain that? Any hands up? I intend to ask a question, actually. No, yes. we're not taking questions yet. You have to wait. Uh, yes, Maharaj. Brother Krishna, brother. First, uh, Maharaj, brother. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, it is because uh, the, the living entity is given a minute freedom. So he, he has a freedom to desire. Well, he may be free to desire. Does it mean he's allowed to do whatever he wants? Due to his desire, uh, then uh, the Lord gives uh, sanction so that the uh, material nature would, would act So the Lord has to sanction, right? So why does the Lord sanction some very bad, very sinful thing? Uh, because the Lord does not interfere with uh, the minute independence of the living entity, that minute in the, uh, independence of desire. Well, he's the overseer, he's the permitter, shouldn't he interfere? Yes, uh, we have that choice, independence, our independence is very small, as you say, very tiny independence. Our independence is to choose between Krishna and Maya. Either we surrender to Krishna or we surrender to Maya. 
but when it comes to Maya, then we're also controlled. We're also, we're, either way, it, when we surrender to Krishna, we're controlled by the spiritual energy, and when we surrender to Maya, then we're controlled by Krishna's external energy through the modes of nature. So one is controlled through the material nature. As Srila Prabhupada responded when somebody asked him about why the living entity can perform uh, sinful activities when Krishna is the overseer and the permitter, Prabhupada explained, he said, well, he said, it's just like the father may request his son not to do something. Just like the father may tell the son, don't smoke. But the son's thinking, no, no, I want to smoke, I want to do it, I want to smoke. And the father's saying, no, it's not healthy, it's a waste of money, it's dirty, don't. But the son is thinking, oh no, I want to do it. So eventually the son grows up and he gets freedom and the father can't really stop him. So it's a similar situation between the living entity and Krishna. That Krishna gives some, he, he tries to stop the living entity and he tells the living entity, don't do this, this is not proper. As we said, he's the super soul in the heart, so he's telling us, you know, this is not good, don't do this. He's reminding us, this is not right, don't do it. But sometimes the living entity is so insistent and he persists and he doesn't want to listen to the Lord from the heart. He doesn't want to take the instruction. So finally the Lord just has to let him do it. He just has to give that independence to the, to the living entity. To let him go ahead and suffer the consequences of the activity. So like that. So, so the living entity is under the control of the Lord, but he has to want to accept the authority of the Lord. And if we don't accept the Lord's authority, then we come under the control of the Maya. We're controlled, we're not independent, but we're, we're forced to act through the modes of nature. And the different modes of nature give different results. We'll be hearing about that in the next class. So we will ask you here, there's a little exercise you can do. You might like to uh, ha have a look through the purport here of text number 23 and just come up with some, uh, see if you can come up with some quotes about the relationship between the Paramatma and the living entity. Can you just take five minutes to read the purport here and pick out some quotes about the relationship between the Paramatma and the living entity?
Yes, can we get some response? Have you got some quotes here? Something you can give me in relation to the super soul and the individual living entity? Can we have some hands? Yes? The individual soul is Bhukta or the sustained and the Lord is Bhukta or the maintainer. They are innumerable living entities and he is staying in them as a friend. So the relationship is like of a friend. Okay, the relationship is like a friend. Yes. And how does that friendship work? Is it, is it only for the, the devotees that the Lord is a friend? The Lord it always remains in, in every, uh, in every uh, whatever form we take, whatever material body we take, Lord, Lord always accompany the soul. Super soul always accompany the super soul uh, in, any, in any body, in all the species. The devotees are dear to the Lord. That is also fine, but the uh, Lord accompanies the super soul, always accompanies the super soul. Where? Even in the spiritual world? In the spiritual uh, world, the, uh, the constitution, is, it's a spiritual, we get spiritual body. There, there, is, there is no super soul. Super soul is in the material world. Uh, you said, no? Uh, you told us the super soul is in the material world, it's not in the spiritual world. In the spiritual world, we have different body constitution like as Krishna. Okay. Yes? Something else? Hare Krishna Maharaj. It said that the super soul, uh, the Paramatma has legs and hands everywhere, but the individual soul does not. And because the Paramatma is the Supreme Lord, He is present within to sanction the individual soul's desiring material enjoyment. Without the sanction of the Supreme Soul, the individual soul cannot do anything. So, Bhukta and Bhokta. Bhukta and Bhokta, yes. The sustainer and the maintainer. Lord is Bhukta, he's the maintained sustainer, right? And with individual living entities sustained. Okay, good. Yeah, individual Bhukta. All right, anything else? One more point, some more points. Marginal energy and the Supreme Lord is uh, the Supreme, uh, the, he's like the friend. The living entity can be situated either in the material energy or in the spiritual energy. As long as he is conditioned by the material energy, the Supreme Lord as his friend, the Supreme Lord as his friend, the Super Soul stays within him just to get him to return to the spiritual energy. Okay. Yes. So he, that's why the living entity is the Tatastak Shakti. He has the freedom whether he wants to be under the control of Maya or he wants to be with the Lord. Okay. Any more points? The Lord is always able to take him back to the spiritual energy, but due to his minute independence, the individual entities continually rejecting the association of the now this misuse of independence is the cause of his okay. we, we see that the Lord, He gives instruction from within and from without, right? From within, how does He instruct? Oh, we had that, right? Manaji read that. From, with, from within, as a super soul, he tells us, just give it up and turn your faith towards me, then you'll be happy. And from without, he gives us instruction from the Bhagavad Gita. Okay, we'll go ahead, text number 24. 
Someone read? One percent is philosophy, one percent is science, one percent is art, one percent the living entity and the interaction of the modes of nature is sure to attain liberation. He will not take birth here again, regardless of his present position. All right, so what's the qualification to, to not take birth again? We have to understand this philosophy concerning the material nature, the living entity, and the interaction of the modes of nature. Right? Here doesn't mention about the super soul, simply says material nature, the living entity, and the interaction of the modes of nature. But we should also know about the super soul, that's also important, although it's not mentioned in the verse. But in the purport, Prabhupada mentions. Clear understanding of material nature, the super soul, the individual soul, and the interrelation makes one eligible to become liberated. The purpose of knowledge is to understand distinctly that the living entity has by chance fallen into this material existence. Then Prabhupada talks about the process, you need to take a spiritual master, you have to understand Bhagavad Gita, then it is certain that we will never come again to this material world. Right? So, this is one process, one way of getting free, getting out of the material world. So then, how to understand, although, although it didn't mention the super soul in the previous verse, it comes up in the next verse, text number 25. We're going to hear how to understand the super soul. Someone read text 25. Some perceive the super soul within themselves through meditation, others through the cultivation of knowledge, and still others through working without fruitive desires. All right. So understand the super soul through meditation. Who does meditation? What kind of people usually are doing meditation? Ashtanga yogis. Yes, the Ashtanga yogis, they like to do the meditation, right? After they do all the yam, niyam, asan, pranayam, then it's all meditation. So the stages five to eight are all meditation in the Ashtanga yoga. And then what about cultivation of knowledge? Who is that? Gyan yogi. Jnana yogis, yes. Who are, do you know any Jnana yogis? We could say the people who follow the teachings of Lord Kapila. In, in Kapila philosophy, they give more importance to knowledge and secondary importance to meditation. But the primary, their focus, emphasis is more on cultivation of knowledge and secondary part is the meditation. And so the, the Sankhyas. And then, what about working without fruit of desire? Who are they? Karma yogis. N Nishkam karma yogis, right? Nishkam karma yogis. Right? Nishkam karma yogis, because no fruit of desire. So, that's, these are three different paths by which people can understand the super soul. We can see there's different ways of understanding the super soul. And then we go ahead, text number 26. Someone read, read the translation. Of birth and death. All right, so very important to hear, right? They don't know philosophy, but maybe they begin to worship after hearing about him, 
from others. So I want you now to read the purport, text 26. I'd like you all to read through the purport of 26 and see if you can identify some statements in relation to Prabhupada's mood and mission. Mood and mission from the purport of text 26. Please see if you can pick out some statements for us. We'll give you five minutes to do this. Yes? Anybody has, you can, anybody like to give a quote? Do we have some hands? Gita in the Lekhamataji. Yes, Maharaj. Just one. I just want one quote from you. Okay. He, Prabhupada is saying, if, even if common man is, not, is often as capable of the as so-called philosophers, faithful hearing from an authoritative person will help one to transcend this material existence and go back to God and back to home. Prabhupada is saying what? Faithful hearing. Prabhupada is saying what? Faithful hearing. Prabhupada is saying ki, if, if, even if one is not capable, if he is hearing it faithfully from an authoritative person, he can transcend this uh, material existence and go back to God and back to home. Okay, thank you. Faithful hearing. Asim Krishna Prabhu. Yes, Hare Krishna. May I speak? Yes. Another point, one important point mentioned is that Lord Chaitanya also states that there is no need to change his position uh, in Kali Yuga, but one should give up the endeavor to understand that scripture by speculative reasoning. Whatever position one needs, he should um, continue this process of devotional service, which the most important part is here. Okay. Dakshi, uh, Dakshi Narani Mataji. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, <clears throat> uh, here it is, uh, Prabhupada said that if one is fortunate enough to take shelter of pure devotee, hear from him about self-realization and follow in his footstep, one will be gradually elevated to the position of pure devotee. So in this verse particularly, the process of hearing is strongly recommended and this is very appropriate. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, very good. 
कृष्ण प्रभु All right. Thank you, Prabhu. Can we take uh, board responses, Maharaj? Yes. Uh, Shilpa Shyam Mataji. Um, Guru Maharaj, Prabhupada is stressing here also chanting of the Mahamantra in Lord Chaitanya's mood to give everybody the Mahamantra. Oh, very good. Yes. Archana Bhakti Radha Mataji. Hare Krishna. Uh, Prabhupada is saying that for a common man uh, who is a good soul, he can simply advance by hearing. Yes. Right. Maharani Mataji. Um, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, in the first line of the purport, it said this verse is particularly applicable to modern society because in modern society there is practically no education in spiritual matters. So I see Prabhupada's mission there. He wanted to educate society by setting up um, institutions like Myra Institute and um, bring the teachings to the common people. Yeah, very good. Thank you. Very nice. We can see practically the whole, the whole purport is Prabhupada's mood and mission. Practically every sentence one after another, you've, you've each identified different sentences. It's very wonderful, actually, how you did it, that each one of you picked out a different sentence and you saw the, the relationship to Prabhupada's mood and mission. So, very important for us, anyway, to uh, give people the chance to hear, let them hear the, the philosophy, let them hear the chanting of the Holy Name, somehow or other give them a chance to develop a, a little interest in Krishna Consciousness. Very nice. Alright, so that's the completion of the, that section on pra Prakriti and Purush. And then text 27 begins the final section of this 13th chapter. We're going to hear about Jnana Chakshush. Seeing with the, the result of seeing with knowledge. Right. So we'll read text twenty seven. O chief of the Bharatas, know that whatever you see in existence, both the moving and the non-moving is only a combination of the field of activities and the knower of the field. So we can apply this statement in our practical life. When we're moving around, we see different people. Prabhupada explains in the purport, is that there are many manifestations like trees, mountains and hills which are not moving. And there are many existences which are moving, and all of them are but combinations of material nature and the superior nature, the living entity. Without the touch of the superior nature, the living entity, nothing can grow. The relationship between material nature and spiritual nature is eternally going on. And this combination is affected by the Supreme Lord. Therefore, He is the controller of both the superior and inferior natures. So we can practice, we can see how we can practically apply the knowledge which is here in Bhagavad Gita. We, we want to see all different forms of life, all living entities, as simply a combination of the field of activity and the knower of the field. Going ahead, text 28.
Yes, someone can. One who sees the super soul, accompanying the individual soul in all bodies, and who understands that neither the soul nor the super soul within the destructible body is ever destroyed, actually sees. Hmm. So, one who sees the super soul, of course, we say the super soul was, it's, you know, who's going to see, are you actually going to see the super soul with our physical eyes? Well, we can see the super soul with the eye of knowledge. That's the point, to see with the eye of knowledge. This is jnana chakshush, to see with the eye of knowledge, not with physical eyes. But we can see the super soul with the eye of knowledge, how he accompanies the individual soul in all bodies. And who understands neither the soul nor the super soul is ever destroyed, actually sees. Right? So this is knowledge. We understand they're both eternal. The soul and the super soul are spiritual. They're not going to change. All right, go ahead, text 29. One who sees the super soul equally present everywhere in every living being does not degrade himself by his mind. Thus, he approached the transcendental destination. It's very easy to be degraded by the mind. By the mind we see physical forms, but you can see here Krishna is encouraging us to, to see with spiritual vision, to see the super soul everywhere, in every living being. This way we become qualified to approach the transcendental destination. Go ahead, text number 30. One who can see that all activities are performed by the body, which is created of the material nature, and sees that the self does nothing, actually sees. Okay. So the self does nothing. Who is doing everything? Everything is performed. All activities are performed by the body. And the, what's the body? It's created of material nature. So the body is acting. Prabhupada explains in the purport, he says, practically speaking, the body is a machine designed by the Supreme Lord to fulfill desires. We each have our desires. This body is a manifestation. The bodies which we have now are the manifestation of our desires. We desired like this, to have these material bodies. And so the body is a machine for satisfying our material desires. We want to develop transcendental vision. Prabhupada writes in the purport there, last sentence. This transcendental vision of the living entity, when developed, makes one separate from bodily activities. One who has such a vision is an actual seer. Right? To see that everything is done by the body, the self, the soul, the self within the body does nothing. Go ahead, 31. When a sensible man ceases to see different identities due to different material bodies and he sees how beings are expanded everywhere, he attains to the Brahman conception. All right, Brahman conception, seeing all living entities equally, to see the soul within everyone. This is Brahman realized, Brahman conception. Just like earlier in the fifth chapter, is it fifth chapter? Vijjabhanaya Sampani Brahmani Gabehastani. You see all living entities equally. The same concept. Go ahead, 32. Though 
rose with the vision of eternity can see that the imperishable soul is transcendental, eternal, and beyond the modes of nature. Despite contact with the material body, O Arjuna, the soul neither does anything nor is entangled. All right. So the soul is beyond the modes of nature. It's not touched. We'll go ahead, we'll just finish the chapter here, just a couple of verses. 33. The sky, due to its subtle nature, does not mix with anything, although it is all pervading. Similarly, the soul situated in Brahman, vision, does not mix with the body, though situated in that body. So Krishna is giving an analogy to help us understand the nature of the soul. You see, Prabhupada gives analogies, Krishna also gives an analogy. He said, just like the sky does not mix with anything. So the soul situated in Brahman does not mix with the body, although in the body. And in the purport, Prabhupada explains, air enters into water, mud, stool, whatever else is there, but still it does not mix with anything. Similarly, the living entity, although situated in varieties of bodies, is aloof from them due to his subtle nature. Therefore, it is impossible to see with material eyes how the living entity is in contact with the body and how he is out of it after the destruction of the body. No one in science can ascertain this. 34, another example. O son of Parata, as the sun alone illuminates all this universe, so does the living entity, one within the body, illuminate the entire body by consciousness. All right. So the, an, the, another analogy. The, the one sun illuminates all the universe, so does the soul, one soul within the body. Illuminate the entire body by consciousness. And the final verse? Those who see with eyes of knowledge the difference between the body and the knower of the body and can also understand the process of liberation from bondage in material nature attain to the supreme goal. All right. The purport of the, this thirteenth chapter is that one should know the distinction between the body, the owner of the body, and the super soul. One should recognize the process of liberation as described in verses eight through twelve. Then one can go to the supreme destination. All right. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Well, it, it's an, the, the number of souls, is, there's an infinite number of souls. And souls are not created or destroyed. So it must remain the same. Right? For the soul, there's never birth and there's never death. Yes. So they're not created and they're not destroyed. And so the number of souls is constant. Right? It's, I need a little bit of uh, clarity how to understand how the soul enjoys and suffers. 
through which medium Brazil do this. And, and the uh, it said the body is the one that does activities of the soul. So I need an understanding how the soul enjoys and suffers. Through which medium does this work or enjoy? How does the soul suffer or enjoy? Is that your question? Maharaj, huh? What is the medium of that experience? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. The soul does not suffer. The, the, for the soul does not suffer or enjoy. The nature of the soul is eternal, full of bliss and knowledge. But our consciousness becomes polluted, becomes covered. But the soul by nature is always joyful. But we are not able to always perceive that joy because we identify with the body. And we identify with our mind and senses. Our consciousness is, becomes polluted. And the consciousness, instead of focusing on the soul, our consciousness focuses on the material body and senses. Therefore, suffering is there. Therefore, material enjoyment is there. It's all due to the mind and senses that we're trying to exploit the material nature. Therefore, we're struggling very hard with our senses and our mind. So the problem is there. We identify we identify with the body instead of identifying with the soul, right? We have to know we're not the body and we have to detach ourselves from the body and the senses. Then we can come to the real platform of knowledge. So Maharaj Kupada said that it's enjoyment and suffering it's only the body, not of the soul, but because the soul can identify with the body, is associating with the enjoyment and the suffering. Yes, that's right. You got it? Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, Krishna Prabhu? Maharaj, may I ask? Yes. Maharaj, I, one, I heard one senior devotee saying that uh, if one has to be given the body of a hog or a dog, then in, in the yam, uh, Yamalo, Yamraj uh, makes him to practice like hog eats stool, so Yamraj makes him practice eating stool. Then he started likes, liking it and then he is given the body of, of a hog. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, could well be. You got to practice. You got to go into that body. You got to practice. That's right. They practice in, in Yamalok, everyone, for <laughs> the next bodies. <laughs> Not very pleasant. I want to ask a little bit about uh, previous, uh, just now you explained that uh, due to the soul uh, wanting to enjoy this material nature that uh, their consciousness is polluted and, and thus they uh, experience this uh, suffering enjoyment and enjoyment through the body. Uh, right now, from, I might say, my personal experience, uh, that uh, we can see that there is the mind, there is intelligence like that, false ego, and that is uh, the subtle elements of material nature. But what is consciousness itself? Uh, is it like an attribute of the soul that is consciousness? Or, or yes, right. Consciousness, no. consciousness no. would be consciousness. consciousness is a symptom of the soul, right? When the soul leaves the body, consciousness also goes. So, 
just like the sunlight in the sun. The, the sunlight is a proof of the sun. So consciousness is a proof of the soul. So scientists, they try to explain consciousness in, in material ways. But we say consciousness simply comes from the soul. The source of energy in the heart is coming from the consciousness. The consciousness is the uh, the life giving the 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 it's the the, ener the, this, the the energy within the body. It's coming from the soul. So our consciousness, when it's focused on the soul, then it's pure. It's Krishna consciousness. But when the consciousness is focused on the body and the senses, then it becomes material, material consciousness. Material consciousness, the, con the conditioning of the living entity, to think is the body and to want to exploit and to enjoy the senses. So this conditioning, this is due to the contaminated consciousness. Yes, we have also mind and intelligence, right? Higher than the, the senses is the mind, and higher than the mind is the intelligence. And the intelligence is seated next to the soul. Hmm. So the intelligence that the, the soul can also help to give intelligence, the, the, the guidance of the the soul, the instruction coming from the soul comes, can come to the intelligence, to guide the intelligence, what is proper, what is not proper, and what is proper. So this is in spiritual intelligence, to take guidance from the soul. How to understand the relationship between the mind, the intelligence and consciousness Hmm, it's a very deep subject. <laughs> um, we're simply dealing with the basic philosophy here of the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna doesn't really get into this. Maharaj. If there are more, I'm ready. There's two hand raised, Maharaj. Okay. Uh, Adiraj Prabhu. Yes, Maharaj, I just wanted to know. So when uh, when one is taken to Yamaraj, uh, who does he take? I mean, if the soul doesn't suffer, I'm trying to understand. Who... Well, at the time of death, the soul leaves the body, the subtle body accompanies. Right? The subtle body is taken along with the soul. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Ganga Prasad Prabhu. Maharaj. Yeah. So what is the role of the soul and body? Sorry Prabhu, your voice is not clear. So what is the role of the soul? 
What is the role of the soul in the body? The soul gives life to the body. Without the soul, there's no life in the body. We said the soul, the body is like the machine. So the soul is like the operator or the power supply to the machine. The machine doesn't function on its own. Or, you know, you have a car, you need a car driver. So the soul is like the car driver. Or the soul, we said, is the uh, chariot driver, uh, the, the passenger, the passenger on the chariot. The soul is a passenger on a chariot. In the example of the chariot, we have the driver and the horses, the horses are the senses and the driver and the reins and the soul is a passenger. So the soul is very, very crucial. The dead body means no soul. The time of death, the soul leaves the body. But we said there's also two souls, not one soul. You have the individual soul, you also have the super soul. And the super soul function, we will hear in the 15th chapter, he gives knowledge, remembrance and forgetfulness. The super soul we heard today, he's the overseer, the, the permitter, he's the, 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 the master, the enjoyer, the supreme enjoyer. All right. Yes. Any other questions? The subtle body has to go back to the different elements of the material nature. You have to get free of that. You have, just like for the, the devotee, for the pure devotee, then he ha the subtle body is already spiritualized. He doesn't have a material body anymore. His subtle body, the mind, the intelligence, is all spiritualized. So he doesn't have, he's, he's, he's purified the, the subtle body. It's become spiritual. Yes. I would like to ask how to understand the soul in this material world. So, uh, have they been in uh, the spiritual world before the soul? And how that the soul is called Nityabada, the conditioned soul? It's called Nityabada because it's been here a very long time. Been here a very long time, longer than we can remember. So it's called Nitya Bada. But it can become also Nitya, Nitya, Nitya Mukta. Nitya Bada soul can become Nitya Mukta, can become a liberated soul. It's not that he has to remain eternally conditioned, he, he can become liberated. But Nitya, in the sense that he's been here a very long time. Right? There is one more question, Maharaj, can we take? All right. Uh, Gita Maharaj, Maharaj, at the, as the soul accompanies the super soul, at the time of death, uh, the soul leaves and super soul both simultaneously, uh, like, together leave the body? At the time of death, yes. 
Yeah, the super soul the accompanying. Yes, birth after birth. And, and he, then the soul with the super soul also, soul remains with the super soul and then uh, till the next body also. Get, getting the next body for. Yes, the super soul carries some memories. We forget, but the super soul remembers. Krishna says, from him comes knowledge, remembrance, and for, so he remembers the desires from the past life. The super soul comes with us and reminds us, remember you wanted that? Remember you wanted that situation? It reminds the soul. So the super soul is like that as a friend, reminding us of our desires. <laughs> because super soul is with us. Huh? Because super soul is with us, so if one goes to Yamraj, we go. Yeah, right. Yeah, he there goes also. with us. He'll go there with us also. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. All right. How? Okay, Prabhu. Any other question? Yeah. All right, so we'll finish. Yes. Can you tell me again, Prabhu? What's the question, Prabhu? quite clear about her point about the the soul being attached to maya <laughs> uh, attached to the body maya. attached to the body so they become in the in the mind well so becoming... yes yeah, if you see it in that way, you can see it in that way. Krishna, Surya, Sama, Maya, that Krishna is like the sun and Maya is the darkness. No harm. You can see the attachment of the, the soul in the body and then the soul leave the body. The soul is not attached, but the consciousness becomes attached to that situation. Of course, it, this consciousness, this is the manifestation of the soul, right? This, from the soul is this consciousness. So uh, out of illusion, we're thinking we're happy. Just like in the darkness, people think they're happy. They need to come to the light. 
So Krishna is the sun, Maya is the darkness. So come out of Maya, come to the light. Tamasi maja tirgama. Don't remain in the dark, come to the light. That's what the Vedas say, right? So knowledge, knowledge is light. Ignorance is a darkness. So Krishna is giving us the knowledge here. Okay, so we have to stop now, getting very late. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Gorbakta Vrinda Ki.